mountain to the ocean, from the river to the leeward side. Aloha and welcome back. You're watching Rise Above Hawaii, which is a 30-minute talk story on health. And I'm Dr. Kimo, your host, and I define health as everything and anything under the sun, including education, including family, and including community. So today I'm very uh, happy to be able to talk straight from my home. Uh, so welcome to my home. And we have some special guests here today, the Alip family, uh, Dean Alip and Dylan. Uh, Dylan's a senior at Kamehameha high school and I wanted to, I always wanted to feature um, first a father-son kind of relationship but also a youth who is pretty soon graduate yes. yeah, and, uh, and off to college. So why don't you share with the audience uh, uh, kind of like your senior, well first who you, who you are and where you're from and a little bit about your senior project. My name is Dylan Alip, I'm a senior at Kamehameha and my senior project is to give a student's perspective of the college process um, from your freshman to your senior year. So I want to basically give a students an entire run through of what they're going to be going through, the good and the bad of the entire college process, hopefully to help them and their parents avoid unneeded stress, which um, we went through and uh, it's something that I would hope others could avoid. Yeah, yeah. So I want to give them almost a non-presentation like but rather just a peer-to-peer -peer experience and. Um, like a talk story session of how it'll be like in preparation for their upcoming years. You know, that's so awesome. I, I, did, I did a segment once on um, when I, right before I did that keynote address to Konawaina, and I did a, kind of like a tips while in college, you know. But nothing's better than peer to peer. Um, and, and given the fact that you pretty much went through the process, did you pick a college yet? I did. What college is that? Uh, I'll be attending Stanford University next year. Stanford University, you guys. Yeah, local boy. <laughs> wow, how did that happen? Um, was that I your said, first choice? It or? was my first choice. Oh, okay. I, how, many, how, many, how many high school students get their first choice? That's pretty cool, that. Yeah, so it was, um, it how was awesome. How many get Stanford? <laughs> how many get Stanford? That's right. So, but, so how, how did that work out? Were, were your, your parents were involved? My parents were definitely a big part of it. Um, they helped me to explore the colleges. Uh, we went traveling one spring break to look at colleges and Stanford was one of them. Okay. And that was when I, I fell in love with the school and I really realized that that was where I wanted to be. And um, I set it as my goal to get there. So I really forced myself to work hard and study and do good on my tests and focus on my extracurriculars and every other aspect of the college process. And I applied early, um, I found out early and just, it really made me feel like all my work was um, rewarded yeah. and that anyone can do that if yeah. they work hard they can achieve what they want. Well Stanford's a tough, I mean it's a tough school to get in. I think, I, I think when I was getting my doctorate I put Stanford, Harvard just in case something happened. You know, <laughs> but I never got it but man that's incredible. Congratulations. Thank you. So, so your senior project is, is it is it pre-college kind of advice as well or strictly what to expect when you're a college freshman, sophomore, junior, senior? Uh, it's pre-college advice, okay. so what you'll be going through in high school oh, and what you can do to help um, prepare yourself and put the best of yourself forward for the colleges oh, to look at. Why, do, do you find some of, some of your peers not interested in college or some of them think they don't care or what? Uh, what, yeah, that, what inspired you to pick this topic? Um, one of the problems that I've seen a lot is that a lot of students, especially from uh, my school, they don't feel as if they're um, capable of getting into a school like Stanford. And I see a lot of potential in um, a lot of my classmates and in a lot of the underclassmen, and I want them to strive for the highest goals and for their dream schools. And mm -hmm. I know that they're capable of getting to a school like that, and I just want to show them that they're capable of it and be confident in their ability. Right. Not that the other school is not important, but <laughs> what, what, what I hear you saying is that whatever school you think is your dream school, yes. no scared. Exactly. Don't let them get chance. You can. Yep. And, 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 and your thing is to inspire them, to, to make them believe that they can and also to give them some tips on how to make that happen. Yes. That's an awesome senior project, you guys. I like that. <laughs> well, you know, you know, your dad and I go way back. We're both counselors, uh, and education is also important to us. Um, but what I really admire about you guys' relationship when I talk to your dad is the fact that you guys can talk story. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, Mr. Ali, <laughs> you know, you, you, the, the father-son relationship can be kind of tricky eh, sometimes. Um, what, what, what has been your experience with Dylan uh, up to this point? Um. It's been a blessing. Yeah. It's been a big blessing. Um, 
and you know we're just so fortunate that uh, we could we can talk story for hours. Oh, if yeah. I coming coming over on the trip right now, was our our drive. What were we talking about? Talking about um, the whole way. We just yeah. we're talking about uh, school school, and we had uh, you know various topics. So. Mm. Um, it's always been something that we've been able to do, just talk story. Yeah. And uh, like I said, it's a, it's a blessing that we, we have the opportunity to do that. You know, I, I, I read in, in, in some parenting magazine that they said uh, that if, the, if there's one thing that the father-son can, can do is just keep the communication lines open. Just so that, so that whether you're talking about anything or, or, you know, can be small things, big things, but if that communication lines is open, yeah. then, I, then I think it's healthy. Definitely, and definitely. So, so what, what, what? You guys have similar interests. So I, I know you don't play basketball. Your dad was a basketball <laughs> star. Um, let's talk about that. So how, how did was sports? Did you try to influence him to play sports uh, in his earlier years? Or actually, um, we we tried soccer, um, but I know he had an interest in music. Mm-hmm. So um, at an early age, you know, I had him take some piano lessons. We used to play ukulele together. Oh, piano. Um, yeah. Actually, <laughs> pi- like, oh. piano, um, you know, I think it's like key because you learn scales. You learn formal. Oh. formal and um, so that was that was the interest we had. But besides that, I think what really built our relationship was, you know, what my father did with me when I was growing up. What was that? Going to YPO fishing. Oh. Going to, down to Kauai High, throwing net, and going fishing at night, and... Uh, you know, that's that's the kind of stuff. It's mm. really special for me. And I'm gonna remember, and I'm gonna miss yeah. when he goes. But <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm so blessed too that we had the chance to actually do that. No? Yeah, yeah. So, so you, because you know, my my struggle, and I've shared this many times on the uh, on the show, is is sometimes I like my kids be what I was. Right. You know. So, but and you being a great athlete, you know, you never felt that sh- that, that struggle with dealing. No, I never have. I never have. Um, it's uh. You know, as a, as a as a parent, you grow, no? Yeah. As a learn. parent, you grow and you look at it, and and um, you know, I, like I said, I'm so blessed that I was able to 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 see what his interests were, yeah. And then I think that's and key go that, with that, yeah. Support yeah, that. That was ama- that's amazing. That that takes some yeah. some discipline. <laughs> like I don't know if my son was into ballet. I don't know if I could say, but go be on ballet. But you do what you do what you. Eat. You, you felt pressure knowing that I, your, your dad came from an I, athletic family? Or? No, I, I never really felt the need to um, impress him with my athletic ability. Mm-hmm. So I, I always felt it was an open option for me. So when I got into high school, that was when I really started doing sports and I never felt any pressure yeah. on, on his part uh, to excel or do well in athletics. Wow. It's cool, right? Actually, actually, not to interrupt, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm just correct uh, protocol <laughs> on, on, on AG, but Actually, he influenced me. Oh. With uh, you know, in high school, what major sports, right? Yeah. Basketball, football. Yeah. Um, I did a little bit of track, but I never started running until he got into cross country. Oh. I, that's and right. that's when I started to to you know ha- gain an interest in, in running. So actually, he influenced me. Wow. As far as uh, yeah. uh you know, sports that's or interesting. So exercise that's little, and wow. so forth. Yeah. <laughs> Can't go work the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, yeah, because he's a, you know, not to say that you're not an athlete, he's a, a major athlete, you, you like running. Yeah. Um, he's on the track team, uh, he runs the 4x100 four by four by uh, with the varsity, with, with great runners like Sean Kagawa and Keone Wong, so, you know, you get, so you're right in there. And, and so talk about the balanced uh, student, you know, I think it's something we all strive for in our kids. You, you're happy, you, uh, you, you, you do well in school. And you pretty much get a nice balance in your life. I think that's great. Yeah. And, and the fact that he played music, you guys. So, you know. <laughs> uh, and I told him, hey, you might have to play a song or two. So I'll, 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 could you share with the audience a little bit of your instrumental uh, talents on the guitar or the ukulele you pick? Sure, I'll, I'll do the guitar first. Okay. <laughs> when you started? Um, I started playing guitar when I was in seventh grade. Oh. Um, I really started picking up on guitar when I got into high school because slack key became something really interesting to me. Um, yeah. Helped me to get in touch with my Hawaiian side and yeah. I just love the sound of it. It's really relaxing and it's something I could just play for hours and listen to. Fantastic. So that's why I started learning Slacky. All right, well, share with us something, anything after you. 
This is a song entitled Kui Po Onona by Ledred Ka'apana. It's in a standard slack key tuning. <laughs> How beautiful that was. That's awesome. Unbelievable, bro. You get some talent. Man, I wish I could play that. Thank you. And, and uh, you know, this is the, the year of music. Uh, we had uh, Ernie Cruz Sr. on. Uh, we had Mr. and Mrs. Suarez on. Manny, Manny uh, Velez asked, asked to be on, so we hope to get him on soon. Uh, just because I read research that music is good for the soul. And, and I learned to play music from Dean. Uh, when we were uh, at Wheeler Elementary School as counselors, and I cannot sing, but at least I can strum the ukulele, so I thank you for that. <laughs> you're welcome, you're but you know, welcome. when I stress out, wow, that's, a, that's a good thing to play, and if I could play like that, that's like my medication right there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a good job, I appreciate that. Thank you. Let's, 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 let's go back to the, um, the senior project, because uh, I think it's critical, especially now with graduation right around the corner, for kids to know that, that it is possible and that they can aspire to their greatest dream. So tell us more about that. And what is a senior project anyway? Are you going to be on, Jenny? At um, Kumemel, every senior needs a senior legacy, which is our way of giving back to the school, as well as the community, and hopefully a way that um, continues on throughout the years, being a legacy. So uh, my, I wanted to do something to help the students, because I felt the college process was the most grueling part of um, high school for me, as well as my family, um, really testing the limits of the bonds we have. Um, so it caused me to realize that this is something I would like to share with everyone else. So I wanted to break it down into different aspects, such as your academics, uh, testing, 
your extracurriculars, as well as picking a college for the right reason, which was the most important part to me. So this is how I uh, decided to do this project where I would um, basically just be talking story to other students, giving them my perspective, as well as hopefully being able to answer any questions they have about it because um, as Dr. Kimo was saying earlier, peer-to-peer -peer is sometimes better than a peer to an adult and you just have a more, um, an easier time saying what you want to say and asking what you want to ask. So that was why I chose to do this because I felt it could possibly be beneficial to uh, my classmates as well as anyone else who would want to know about the college experience. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, I, part of my college experience, what, what, the first thing I noticed, a lot of the local uh, kids, myself included, was we miss home. You know, we just miss the local food, we miss the beach, um, and you haven't experienced that yet. <laughs> so, 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 my, so my little piece of advice is to find somebody from Hawaii that you can connect with so you can share your sorrows, if you will. Definitely. And is, is there students from Kamehameha or from the Big Island that you know of that uh, are yes. Stanford? Uh, one, that was actually one of the reasons why I chose Stanford. They have a, a very prominent Native community. Um, they actually have a native theme house, which houses Native Americans, Alaskan Natives, and um, Native Hawaiians. Oh. So that was something that was important to me. There are also a few past graduates of my school, uh, specifically my campus, who are still at Stanford. So um, I, I know that there's going to be that home feel there still. And being on the West Coast, it's not going to be too far from home. That's so I think I'll, I'll be able to handle it. Yeah, I, I went to Nebraska. It was a little bit of culture shock. <laughs> Cold and extremely hot. And 98% Caucasian. I look a little bit Caucasian. Talk funny, they couldn't figure me out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think the West Coast would be much more culturally similar. So, um, what, what 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 do you think is is the one of the biggest barriers be, besides the fact that maybe students in your age feeling I know can? What is another barrier that you think stop them from pursuing their, their dreams? Oh, um, definitely the second one I would see was uh, seeing outside of Hawaii. Because um, we are really isolated, yeah. and uh, not everyone gets to experience the mainland or anywhere else, actually. And I was fortunate enough to have been accepted to a few programs during my high school career where I was able to tra uh, travel to other schools. So I, I lived at Harvard for three weeks, and so that was my first real experience wow. of leaving home for a while. <laughs> and um, a few months ago, I went to Dartmouth for about a week. and. All these traveling experiences without my parents and just being with other students really opened my eyes to how, what it's going to be like and um, yeah. really made it easy for me to realize that the mainland would be a place where I would be okay with going. Wow. And traveling, I believe, was the next important thing, just okay. experiencing it and um, being out of Hawaii for, to be comfortable with leaving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. I, that's a great tip, you folks. Uh, you know, if you can get out of the islands for a week or two, away from your parents <laughs> <laughs> and kind of experience that in the a little independence if you will as a practice i think that's that's a great tip now ha, people just kind of just say i like go harvard for you know three weeks or Dart dartmouth yeah. you gotta be invited eh? oh. um well luckily my counselors are on it and they uh introduced me to the programs okay. to which i had to apply um, and I was fortunate enough to be one of the few accepted for some of these programs and um, invited to go. So these programs actually, all expenses were paid, which uh, made it a lot easier for me to say, uh, yes, I'd definitely love to come. Um, because cost would be a concern, especially yeah. with a flight to an East Coast uh, school. But uh, So uh, these programs are out there and students just have to ask and find out about right. them to get into them. So they're there. Right. And to experience the away from home feeling, I, uh, you know, like sports can also be an uh, Another way for parents to get away from the kids a little bit, you know, that one week away at some baseball camp, uh, just so that kids can feel that, that little bit, oh, I'm, you know, mommy, daddy, not here kind of thing. Yeah, I think that can be helpful. Um, what about academically? You know, what, one of my big tips was, because uh, I read a book, it was like six things to do to get A's or something. It was only like a five-page book, my mm -hmm. book. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> but it was like the first thing they said was sit in the front, sit in the front, you know. No scared, ask questions. Yes. No scared, um... Go, because uh, you know, when you in college, there's such thing as office hours mm -hmm. where you can go oh, yeah. the, the professor and use up all their time. <laughs> They're getting paid for that, so no scared. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I, um, so, so those are the, the kind of the, the tricks I think that kind of help me just to get by. You mm -hmm. know? Um, do you foresee any, any challenges like that where you're going to have to use? What is your vision of your first day of class or your first month? Um, I expect it to be hard yeah. because. Uh, 
academically, I chose the school because I knew it would be challenging, <laughs> which was a, an important part for me. So um, I'm looking forward to the challenge, and I'm definitely going to be on it yeah. for as long as I um, possibly can stay focused and trying to uh, take in whatever they're giving me on that first day and try not to be overwhelmed <laughs> until I start to get used to what it'll be like. Yeah. Okay, well, that, that, that is smiling. Then. <laughs> what is some of your worries? I know this, it's your good son going away. And, you know, there's plenty of trust, but I, you must have some worry. Huh? What is your biggest worry for Dylan? Uh, you know, uh, like I said, all of this uh, is, is been a, ma a major blessing on our family. Yeah. Not, not only for him, but as a, as a family, brought, brought us a lot closer. Yeah. And um, you know, I have faith. Yeah, that have faith. I have faith that he's gonna that, be okay. That um, you know, and, and, and to be honest, uh, we just had a discussion not too long ago, and he he asked me to have faith in him. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, and it's a great thing, uh, great conversations we have, and uh, even if there's you know there's issues, whatever, we uh, be able to communicate like that. Yeah. And then yeah. that really opened my eyes. He said, have faith in me, that. Yeah. I said, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> he was getting worried. You know, I'm sorry. Um, I was worried, you know. Yeah. Worry really doesn't have no That's value, true. you know. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's just taking up your energy. and then It's a good good thing for health, too. Eh? Yes, Try not to worry. Try not to worry. Have faith. Have Unless faith. you're superstitious and you think worry can change future events. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but it really cannot from yeah, the yeah, evidence. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. No sense worry, yeah? yeah. But what what is some advice that you 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 gave him or would continue giving him? Uh, um, you know, because you know you shamanad boy, right, 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 right. right. You know, uh, just to um, you know, stay focused, make the right decisions. Yeah. Um, have fun. Yeah. Have fun. I think I think uh, sometimes I think I'm more excited than than he is <laughs> as far as going to college. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, oh, wow, are you going to you know? Because I've been to the campus. It's oh, an nice. awesome campus, and um. I remember my first few days at, at college, yeah. and it was you know it was eye opening and, <laughs> and you know fun and you yeah. met I met so much people it was overwhelming, yeah. but uh, it is probably the best time of my life. Yeah, college. So I told him I'm always telling him enjoy it, enjoy. Yeah, it. yeah. yeah that's, that's my that's my uh, advice to you. Uh, yeah, that, that's great. You know my 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 advice to my kids is enjoy it, have fun. Uh, A's is awesome. B's, you can do better, and C, you're coming home. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be my uncle advice. <laughs> no. uh, but uh, but I, 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 I'm happy for you. Is, uh, is a senior project, I know other schools have senior projects. Mm -hmm. um, Khmer Mayor's one is interesting because they, they invite the public even. Like, yes. uh, I think in two weeks, they'll be inviting people to the campus to do a some some senior is doing something on concussions. Oh yeah, and so I, you know, so a I good friend of mine actually. Yeah. So you know, inviting the public. Um, I think the senior projects are are great. It's, it's a great way to kind of set a kid off in a direction, maybe even a career direction. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about that. You, you know, I, I see yourself as you're a great speaker. You're very grounded. You're well adjusted. Parents did a good job with you on that. <laughs> um, you know, you, your your future is bright. You know, I I can see. I don't know, politician, what, Rosie? But more like superintendent or something, uh, doctor. <laughs> well, what is your thoughts on? Um, what, what, what do you want to be? My my goal is to become an orthopedic surgeon. Orthopedic surgeon. Okay. So I'm gonna be uh, getting into the pre-med program at Stanford. Uh, my primary major will be human biology, although I'd like to possibly double major or minor in music because, like my dad was saying, it's a very prominent part of my life. Yes. But um. Like I was talking about sports earlier, I didn't start really getting into it until high school, and that really got me interested in the body. Oh. Uh, and joints being a part of that body, um, I've seen people... You mean uh, joints like knees? Yes, um, okay. I, I've seen a lot of my classmates get injured, ACL tears and whatnot, and um, not just students, but even um, adults who experience back pain and anything like that, you know? What do you get the more? So th that's something I felt that I was interested in, uh, especially being an athlete and something I would want to do to um, help people back here. So that's another thing. I definitely know that I want to come back here after I get um, my education. You promise? I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I will be coming back. Okay, okay, okay. We're happy because it's hard, you know, to, because once you start, you know, you might... I don't know, find one good looking wahine or something, <laughs> you know, stock, yeah, okay. But, uh, wow, that's awesome, bro. You know, the fact that you can even articulate that. I, I don't know, Dean, 
you were aware of what you wanted to become prior to your, the first three days in Shamanad. You knew what you was going to be. Oh, you're not sure, huh? Well, actually, <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't, I haven't said this to him yet. Okay, well. And I have another son, too, so I'm going to start right out there. But when he was in a ninth grade, yeah. he came home one day and said, hey, Dad, can you tell me about your, your, your plans in ninth grade and what you were going to do and this and that? And I looked at him and I was like, I'm going to make up something. <laughs> Because <laughs> my plans was how I was gonna get to Waipu and go surfing, <laughs> you know. So I, I think I came up with something that uh, you know somewhat, yeah. somewhat uh, legitimate. Yeah. And he believed Believable. me. <laughs> <laughs> he believed me. But um, no, you know, to answer the question, I think uh, the light the, for me the bulb came on around me to my uh, my sophomore year in college where I said, okay, you know, this is what I'm here for. I want to get into the education field. Yeah, yeah. Then I started to get grounded and focused. But yeah. prior to that, um, you know, I thought surfing was going to be my major. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I know. So the, the fact that he's way, way ahead of the game here, it's awesome. And, and I hope there's uh, students out there that is, that is watching and taking using Dylan as an example that, that you can be anything you want to be as long as you set, you set your mind on it and you have a plan. I like that. Hey, we're coming to a close pretty soon, but I think we got to end with Dylan playing a little instrumental for us. Uh, as a closing. So uh, I'm going to let Dylan close. Thank you, Mr. Alip, for Thank coming. For Dean us. and Dylan, Thank appreciate you. you coming to my home and talking stories. And we're going to finish off with Dylan playing some uh, some music for us. So thank you. Aloha, Big Island. Love you guys. And Hawaii. Ahui ho. This is a piece entitled The Monolos Laki uh, by Fred Punahou. It is in a standard tuning. Aloha. On the island, we do it and 
Side. From the mountain to the ocean, from the winger to the leeward side. 